What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're setting up bump stops and limit straps on the FJ40. So we got hydraulic bump stops for the front and the back as well as limit straps. Before we get into this, let's talk about setup real quick. So as far as how we want to set up our bump stops, some people do it differently. I'm doing it the way a lot of in the rock crawler community kind of set these things up. So there's a difference how you set these up, whether you want the bump stop to contact at full bump which is the axle moving vertically straight up or if you want it to contact on articulation now with the coilovers i have they have about an inch of a bump stop built into the coilover so i'm going to use that which a lot of people do to stop the tire on articulation just because it's slow speed that's not going to hurt the coilover that's why they put a bump stop in the coilover to stop to basically bottom out the coilover before the actual coilover bottoms out. It'll bottom out on that bump stop. So what we wanna do is we wanna set up our hydraulic bump stops for when the axle goes straight up. Like if you were to jump this thing or if you were to come off a rock ledge or just smash the front end down, you want these bump stops to stop that travel because if you don't, you're smashing your, your steering off your oil pan or your pan hard bar off your axle or whatever contacts first you're gonna break it. And that is where you get the most force. You don't really get a whole lot of force and a whole lot of energy when you're just articulating. Like I said, it's a super slow motion, so you can stop that with the bump stop and the coilover. So one thing why it's hard to set up these bump stops to stop it for full bump and articulation bump is because with your typical three link, four link system, when you flex the axle, the axle actually moves side to side. When you drop that pan hard bar down, it'll pull the axle. It'll basically swing like this when you drop the axle down, when you articulate that one side. So when you articulate the axle moves side to side, you're, sometimes your bump stop won't even hit your pad if you if it moves enough if you have a short enough pan hard bar and your axle moves a lot you probably won't even hit the pad when you have when you set it up for a full bump and then another thing it's when you have the bump stop off the frame your coilovers out here you flex it you're obviously your axle is at an angle so now you have more of a distance between the bump stop and your pad than you do when the axle is straight the only way to really combat that is to have the bump stop and the shock mounted in the same spot that's hard to do. That's very hard to package, very hard to fit. So what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to use the shocks, the coilovers to stop it on articulation. And we're going to use the, the bump stops that we have now, these hydraulic bumps for vertical travel. And then as far as limit straps go, obviously pretty self-explanatory. You want it to limit the down travel, but you got to keep in mind these things do stretch. So they say uh, they stretch about an inch per foot of strap. So if you have a one foot strap, figure it'll stretch about an inch and to set these up basically just drop your axle down articulate it on the droop side on the side that's farther down you set your limit strap up obviously you want to suck it up about an inch from what starts to bind so my drag link starts to bind first so i'm going to get my drag link to bind i'm going to jack the axle up about inch maybe a little bit more just to be safe and then we'll make our tabs to mount these limit straps up so we're going to jump on bump stops first what i am going to do just so you guys aren't confused i am going to flex the axle just because the coilovers move in and away from the frame. So I wanna make sure that we have clearance on both sides where we're gonna mount these bump stops and then we'll get the bump stops mounted. These are, I do have uh, these three inch threaded bump stops. So these, you can see have a collar on them and it's threaded. So we, we're gonna weld on that tube there and then we can adjust these up probably four inches up or down. So that's one nice thing about the threaded ones. We got a lot more adjustability. So if we do change something in the future, we can adjust our bump stop up or down.
Well, there's our funky mounts we got built up. So it is gusseted. You can see on the back side, kind of along the middle, and then on both sides, I'm going to be welding it right to this link bracket. Now, this is going to be kind of tricky because it's so tight with this pumpkin in the way, especially on this side. It's not as bad on the passenger side, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these top welds off. I'm going to pull this top plate off so I can get inside of this bracket and weld the inside and then weld the outside over here. Over here, like I said, it's really tight, so I'm not going to be able to weld the entire outside. So that's why I want to pull this plate, weld the inside, and then we'll weld this back on. So that's the game plan there. Also, I'm going to pull these back off and weld these cans in just because it's going to be so much easier getting all the way up underneath that with this on the table. I like to get as good of weld as I can, and it's obviously a lot easier to do on the table. So I'm just going to mark this out exactly where it is. I'll cut these little tacks off. We'll weld the bracket to this can and then we'll put these back on weld those in and then we can jump on limit straps so I got these ones here I already measured them like I said these stretch an inch so you want them an inch shorter than what you measure at full droop with your tabs and everything so what we're gonna do is get one side droop down we're gonna measure for our tabs we're gonna jack the axle up one inch to allow for that stretch and then we'll mount this thing right probably off the frame down to the truss here that's where i kind of measured to on both sides that truss is right about the same height right there as on that side over there so i think that's the game plan let's weld these in we'll get these on and then we got to do the same thing on the rear with the bump stops and limit straps i haven't even looked at the rear as far as uh, bump stops go i think they might be a little bit easier we're still gonna have to make a little standoff off of the axle there just because there i mean there's no room at all to get a bump stop you know in between the frame and that coil over there you can see there's absolutely no room especially when you flex this thing out the spring is really close to the frame there so we're gonna have to go be in front or behind that coil over to mount our bump stops
All right, guys, after many, many, many hours of screwing with these limit straps, I finally got them to clear. You can see the tabs are so close just because this axle gets so close to the frame on stuff. So I welded a nut higher up so I could move that whole strap up. And then I had to keep moving this out because when you flex it, that these tabs are hitting each other. So we're at full stuff right now. We're cleared and then this side's not quite full droop but you can see obviously is gonna work just fine so we're finally good uh, bump stops are good to go other than um, I just got to fully weld those I think I'm just gonna hold off because I have so much finished welding I mean all this shock suspension uh, mounts gussets that front frame everything needs to be fully welded in so I think I'm just gonna spend a day honestly I might just wait till I rip this body off have the frame on the ground and I can go through and finish weld everything I think it'll be much easier that way but we're finally good for limit straps and bump stops on the front. So now we need to jump on the back and get those figured out. Thank you. 
Well, we are all set up back here. Now this was a lot easier because the frame, there's so much more room between the frame and the axle at full stuff. I guess the only thing that's not ideal with that is how much we had to lower this, this uh, bump stop in the mount. I really didn't want to bring the mount way down just because of you know simplifying that mount. So I don't think it's really an issue. It shouldn't be anyway. We did raise this up just to kind of help with that height. And we got some gussets back here. There's a gusset inside of this mount and then it's doubled up on top. So it's a half inch thick on top. Freaking beefy. This thing is not going anywhere. We still got to fully weld it in, but I'm gonna just, I'm gonna weld all that in when I pull this truss out, pull this axle out and weld this truss in. I'll do that at the same time. Um, one thing I did do is I figured I'd beef up the front with another pad as well. So that's going to weld on right there. Just an, I mean, I've seen other companies do it. I figured I might as well just, it gives a little bit more uh, meat there from just bashing off of the bump stop. So other than pulling, I'm going to pull these mounts off, fully weld these in, and then we'll get those tacked back on. Uh, but as far as that, everything else goes, I think we're pretty much set up and ready to go. Now what I did, instead of releasing all the nitrogen out of these bump stops, I basically set these up with three inches of shock shaft showing, and these are a three inch travel bump stops. Actually, it's honestly a little bit less than three because of this O-ring here. So we will bottom out bump stops before we ever bottom out coilovers. And like I said, these are adjustable. So it's not that, it's not huge deal. If we're out a little bit, we can adjust that up or down. Well, after doing some thinking, I'm gonna change a couple things. So these gussets on the front of these rear pads, I'm gonna cut off and then we're just going to kind of enclose this whole area just to strengthen the entire mount up kind of tied into the whole truss just because a lot of this mount is hanging off the back of the truss. And I just wanna strengthen this as much as I can. And then, after that we are going to actually do a little work on the front shock hoops now I had a couple of buddies comment and suggest that I tie in to the actual tabs on the mount just to kind of strengthen up where the actual shock bolt on to the mount so I am going to tie that in now we do need to put another flange in it so that we can unbolt it and I'm hoping that everything stays in place when we weld it because all this stuff does move around a little bit and when you have especially two mounts on each side, if something moves a little bit, it's gonna be off and it's not gonna be able to bolt together. So we gotta take our time building this little tie in just so everything will actually bolt back together.
Well, we got these other braces in there. I still am, I'm just letting this thing cool off. I wanted to bolt it on so it will hopefully stay in the same spot, but we got that welded. We still gotta pull it off, weld all this in. But in the meantime, I picked this up while that's cooling off. I figured I needed another reel in here because I picked up a, a full height uh, drill press. My air hose right behind it. That thing is a pain now to get on and off. Plus, I melted a hole in that hose. So, I am gonna mount this thing up there. I already got a couple holes drilled. I gotta finish drilling them out. But, I picked this thing up on Amazon. Well, we're gonna see how this goes. This one looks actually really, really nice. I got a Harbor Freight up there in the back. And this thing looks like a lot better quality. So, I wanna get this thing bolted up, get it, plumbed in. I, I already do have a hose because I do have air locks uh, on my lift. So I'm just going to tee in to that line, probably drop that line down, tee it off, run one line to the lift, one line to here. And we're going to see how this thing works. It's going to be so much nicer having the reel right in the middle of the shop. That way, instead of running the hose all the way from there, all the way around the truck up to the front, it's more centrally located. It's going to be a lot nicer having air right here. <laughs> Well, the looks just keep getting better. I absolutely love how that turned out and that is gonna strengthen everything up. You know, when I originally built this cross member, I was thinking about coming out maybe over here, but good thing I, I did tie it into the actual mount, the actual tabs on uh, for the coilover. So that's gonna strengthen up that, that's never gonna move. I just had a buddy hit me up and say he's seen so many of these tabs rip off of the actual tube. So he said, at least run a brace to there. So. Now that we got that, I definitely am confident that is not going anywhere. And then we did, I do need to buy some clamps, but got the uh, external reservoirs mounted up there, nice and out of the way. That should be good to go there. You see we're clearing the steering on that one. Everything else should be good to go. Got bump stops, limit straps, everything set up. I guess I do have those ones out but these rear ones are in looking good. I'm, I am gonna fully weld all that in once we pull uh, these axles out. So we are, we are looking really good on suspension wise. Also, this thing, we got that all dialed in and it's actually, seems like a really uh, decent reel here. I like it, it's a lot better and it's got 60, I think 65 feet. It came with 65 feet of hose, so. I'll link this one down below if you guys want to check it out. I got, like I said, I got it on Amazon. It wasn't that expensive. Some of these things get really pricey. That one for the money, I think it should work. Well guys, I'm debating what I want to tackle next. I kind of want to get the axles built, but I also kind of want to strip this thing completely down and completely weld in my frame. Basically all the brackets on the frame are just tacked in still, just because like I said, I wanted to make sure 
everything's gonna work. Now that we have all the suspension done, I want to completely just pull the body off, pull the motor tranny out, pull this thing down to the frame. I wanna weld everything in solid, and then I want, I'm gonna bring this thing to have sandblasted, and then I'm gonna paint it. So that's the game plan, either that, or we pull the axles out and go through those, but I think the game plan is I want to get started on this frame and then i guess while we're waiting for the frame to be done we can start doing axles so we got lockers gears a uh, bunch i mean that whole pile of boxes there is parts for these axles so we got a ton of stuff we're doing to them should be really really sweet i'm excited to get these things built and then we can start working on other stuff we still got to completely wire the entire truck i got a harness for that and then we got to wire in all the stuff for the engine i want to start this thing up like you guys know we rebuilt the engine i haven't even started yet obviously it's not wired in or anything so what we got to do that we got a ton of interior stuff to do we got a ton of body work to do rust removal and custom body stuff it's going to be a lot of work but honestly i'm having a lot of fun with it especially all this tube work all the suspension work i've been having a blast doing all this i hope you're enjoying the content i hope it's at least keeping guys entertained maybe you learn something maybe you can learn from my mistakes because i've made so many mistakes on this suspension on brackets on so much stuff but we learn as we go we figure it out as we go that's what i'm doing anyway i've never done quite this much fabrication so i'm learning as i go well that's enough chatting guys i'm gonna get out of here i really hope you enjoyed this video why don't you go smash that thumbs up button comment subscribe we'll catch you in the next one